So we are on a different table in my basement, and in this video, I have a really cool server that I found for pretty cheap online. It is a super micro quad GPU compute server. I'm really excited about this because I'm kind of getting into the GPU compute AI thing, and my use for a server like this or a bunch of GPUs would be for password cracking. Not that I'm actually hacking anyone, but it's just fun to mess with that stuff. So as I rip into this package here, uh, the server is uh, right here. We have, I'm gonna guess these are some kind of GPU mounting bracket, or actually it looks like these are the front rack ears for it. And this box, I'm just gonna do my old fashioned thing and cut apart because I have a bad arm and lifting this out of the box is gonna be uh, more trouble than it's worth. So here is the new server. I'll put an overlay with the model number in the video because I forgot what it was. You can see we have 10 of these two and a half inch drive bays. I'm probably gonna fill up these first two with 512 gig SSDs. Those will be in a RAID 1 array and these last eight will get those 500 gig drives from the R710. Those will probably be in RAID 6. I don't exactly need however many terabytes that works out to. We also have these two vents on the side, and those just have fans and the GPU caddies are behind those. It looks like they ship the front things in a separate bag so they don't get damaged. I wonder how I connect that button to the system. We'll figure that out later. On the back, we have dual 1800 watt redundant power supplies. I should specify those are 1800 watts at 240 volts and 1000 watts at 120. So there'll be 1000 watts for now. I'm looking into having a couple uh, 240 volt circuits put in where the servers are gonna go soon. If I zoom in here, we have dual half height PCIe slots and that would be good for an InfiniBand card and 10 gig NIC or SSD or something. We also have these three full height expansion cards, which I've seen people put a fifth of GPU in there. I'm gonna possibly look into that as well. And then we have our dual gigabit NICs, dual USB 2, IPMI, and VGA. And I think that is a rack ID light. So let's go ahead and open this up. I think you have to put quite a bit of force on these to open that. And let's lift off the cover. We can see the inside of the system. So this is a bare bones unit. There's no RAM or CPU, but it was pretty cheap. But as you saw in the last video, I have dual E5 2630LV2s from the NetBackup 5230 that I'll be putting in here. And I'll have to figure out how to take all this apart. And I also have some RAM from the Super Micro Fat Twins that I can throw in here. I think about eight gigs and that's gonna be fine for testing. Also included are some GPU power cables. That's nice and our either GPU or SSD screws. So I'm not exactly sure how to pull these covers off, but I think it's just like this. And you can see there are dual by 16 slots for the GPUs to screw in. And um, yeah, it's just about it. It's pretty simple. And there are some power cables, some more power cables here. I was actually gonna bring it up that it only came with two power cables, but it looks like it has more. So that's nice. I'm thinking of getting some Tesla K40s for this, and those are about 100 each on eBay, and I'll probably get two of them to start off with. I am going to go eat lunch and get some other work done, and when I come back, we can continue installing the CPU, RAM, and some hard drives in here. So I'm going to start working on upgrades. I have the uh, RAM here. I have a Quadro K2. Uh, that's actually being returned, but that's going in here for now. Something really interesting I found was you can see we have two SATA connectors here and then dual SAS uh, SFF8087 connectors there. And then... Those all run back to this uh, right here, and this plugs into some kind of HBA or something. And then right here, we have a whole bunch of 
SATA connectors. We have 10 SATA connectors going to, I don't know. If I pull out the GPU riser, we have this weird cable that just goes over here to this. Kind of weird, not really sure uh, what's going on here. Um, but it looks like these all connect to this, uh, which doesn't really have anywhere to go. So I'm going to do some uh, messing around with this. I have some old, old SFF uh, SAS fan out cable things. And if they're the right direction, because there's a reverse breakout and a normal breakout cable, if they're the right direction, I'll probably just put them in here and then run all of these drives off the uh, motherboard. And if they're not, I'll probably be getting an HBA for this eventually. But um, yeah, just kind of an interesting design. Thought I'd include it in the video. Another interesting thing about this server is it has a 1U heatsink and a 2U heatsink for the CPUs. Um, not really sure why they did that, because there's nothing like back here or anything. But um, if we take this off, there's our bare socket. Like I said in the last video, and I think in this video, I'm going to be putting some E52630L V2s in here. I have both of those right here with the thermal compound still on them. So I just so happen to have eight two gig matching modules that I took out of the Fat Twins. This motherboard has eight slots, four per CPU, and I have these CPUs in there as well. If I just kind of line that up, and I'm not really doing it on a camera because that's stupid, don't want to damage anything. Um, yeah, CPU, RAM installed. Um, I don't really need a GPU to fire this up. So I went ahead and mounted the system in the rack. The person I bought the rails from did actually send me two left side rails. He's sending one over, but they're the generic super micro rails. So they work both ways technically. So I also have the power button hooked up and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in and turn it on. So I have the server plugged into a PDU in the back of the rack because my UPS is kind of saturated. I'm also going to turn on the KVM switch. This is plugged in with the KVM. Uh, no Ethernet right now. One of those fans in the power supplies sounds absolutely terrible. That's not good. But Let's go ahead and fire up the system. Actually, I'm gonna connect to the KVM first. Uh, that's coming up, so. I don't know how well you can hear it on camera, but there's a deafening high-pitched squeal coming from that fan. Uh, that's really annoying. I'm gonna have to talk to the seller about that. Maybe I'll get a new one. Uh, but the system is initializing. It seems to have posted, so that's good. That is a truly horrible sound. That really hurts my ears, but um, looks like it's uh, working so far. So it is uh, doing other stuff now. You can see the processor is there. That overlay for the Avacent bugs me, but you can only have it solid or transparent. So it looks like the system has completed its uh, post. So uh, that's wonderful. So it's been just over two months since I got this and I haven't made really any progress on this. I'm hoping to upload the video tomorrow. Uh, I'm finishing the edit right now anyway. Uh, it's out of the rack right now. That's not really an issue. Uh, by the way, I sold the R710. And uh, there's been no content about anything I've been doing with this machine, and I should probably specify why. Um, like I said in my update video, I lost my job, and everything's fine. I'm lined up at a new place right now, but uh, I just didn't really want to spend the money I currently have on the video cards for this because that's $400 that I could spend on gas or something. And um, yeah, so that's kind of what's been up with this. It uh, has been serving its role as a Active Directory test machine. I put the SSD out of the XServe 
in there. And uh, like I said earlier, uh, that's, that's not going in right, so I'm not gonna force it. I put eight of those 500 gigs from the R710 in here just because it looks cool. And when it's finally deployed, those are not going in at all. That's really kind of weird, but uh, when it's fully deployed, I'm probably just gonna have an SSD or two in there because I don't need all the storage and all of the storage is gonna be on the NAS because you know that's how I do all the server stuff now, uh, just cause it's uh, kind of convenient that way. It's a pain in the short term, but once you get it working, it's uh, really nice actually. Like I said earlier, I did end up getting replacement power supplies. I determined both of them had failing fans, and uh, if you remember, there was also a high-pitched whine that is some kind of coil in these things, and they all just do that. All four of them do that. So I might go as far as to take apart the power supplies, find what's making the noise, and fix it. But that's only if my parents can hear it from across the house in the living room, because the server rack's gonna go in the corner of the basement. This machine has been really nice for testing Active Directory stuff. That's kind of what I'm into right now. But like I said, eventually I'm gonna be getting all those GPUs and do some password cracking and other AI related stuff because that stuff is pretty interesting to me. Also, hopefully in the future, I'll be doing some more kind of server stuff that's not unboxings because I think like the last like six videos have been unboxings and I feel like that's getting a little boring even for me while editing them. So something I'd like to do in the future is internal DNS. I've done some testing with that. It's pretty cool and um, I'll probably make a video about that soon as well. I've also been doing some kind of router stuff and I've been wanting to make a kind of LAN cache test rig for LAN parties I'm eventually going to be hosting when COVID is over. So anyway, I think that's really all I have to say. I don't want to draw this out too long, but things have been going well with the server and I am really happy with it and excited to see uh, what I can do with it when I get those video cards. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please leave a like and consider subscribing if you want to see more. I also have social media. Go ahead and follow if you want to see incremental updates to my projects. I'll leave links to those in the description. Please consider donating via PayPal and Patreon. I also have an Amazon wish list in the description. Any amount is greatly appreciated. And once again, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next video.